So the first thing I'm going to do in this tutorial, I noticed that my pages, they're a little bit weak um, in the first part of the book. So to strengthen that, I'm just going to glue a couple of pages together to strengthen it. And that way I don't have to worry about it ripping. Now on this page, I thought I would utilize some of the space instead of gluing the whole sheet down on top of the other sheet. I thought I'd make a little pocket. So that's what I'm working on uh, with this one. Just gonna add some glue, but not go all the way up. Just kind of brush it around the edges and a little bit up, depending on how deep you want your pocket. You know, if you don't want it very deep, then you know, you put more glue toward the top of it and then I'm just pressing it down so now I'm going to add gesso on these two pages this will um, this is where I'm going to put my pages spread for this tutorial um, the gesso it kind of kills two birds with one stone so to speak um, you know, it primes the paper for the liquid acrylic paint that I'm going to be adding. It also covers up the words, and so I like both, um, you know, of those things that it does for the paper. So I'm going to start with adding the Burnt Sienna uh, liquid acrylic paint and literally I just did a one drop and the one drop ends up, um, you know, being plenty for this page spread here. And my philosophy is there's no rhyme or reason, just go for it, um, especially since this is going to be a background. Um, you know, if I was doing a mixed media project, um, you know, I would want to use a little bit and then gradually get a little darker and then kind of wash it out a little bit. Um, but for the background, I'm just basically trying to cover the whole sheet um, in, you know, the varying depths of the color, some lighter, some darker. And that's just kind of what I'm doing here. And then and then I'll let it dry. You could let it air dry if there's something else that you need to do. Um, for me, I was trying to get the tutorial um, complete because I know y'all have been waiting and I apologize for the delay. Um, so I'm going to heat set mine with a heat gun and then go on to the next color. Um, which will be the, um, the nude color. That's what I'll be applying next. So now I'm going ahead and applying the nude. Since it's already a light color anyway, I'm just painting it straight on the paper and then to help it blend I'm just adding a little drop of water at, you know as I'm going and of course me I tend to gravitate toward pinks and browns or blues I think those are just it's just my color wheel it's just <laughs> it's just what I love and um, you know every once in a while I kind of veer out of my comfort zone with some greens or purples but pinks and browns those are my go-to y'all know I love my blues I don't think there's ever been a paper collection I've designed that has not had blue in it <laughs> um, so uh, but anyway this is a lot of fun you know just I'm basically just adding the layers and with adding the different colors of paint you know it's more points of interest 
Um, now what I'm going to do is take some of the tissue paper. Uh, now on my copy that I printed, you can see where it's kind of a little messed up. I actually like it. Uh, you know, it just has a neat look to it. So, you know, I'm just going to roll with it. And I'm just going to glue the tissue paper down. And then to help blend it in with our background, I'll be applying some gesso. The point of that is to blend the edge of the tissue paper in with the background, the actual book page. It just softens the edges. And so that's why I apply gesso, um, you know, after I glue this down. So now I'm going to start adding some ephemera. We've got, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the background's looking really good. So I'm going to just start adding some things on top and we'll just kind of figure it out as we go from here. So if you were an existing subscriber with this particular box, you received a bag of embossing powder, and I'm going to show you how I use it in this page spread. So I just apply the ink to the stamp, and then stamp it down, and then go ahead and uh, sprinkle on the embossing powder. Then I like to lay a piece of paper down and just kind of pour it on there. And then I just kind of like to tap it just to get all the excess off if I can. And then you just fold your paper up and just pour it back in the jar. And that way you can just keep using it and, you know, it, it's not wasted and it'll last for a long time. Um, some of my embossing powder I have had, I don't know, 20 years and it still works. It still works, it don't go bad. <laughs> so, um, it, but it takes the heat gun a little bit to heat up. So you'll see me kind of go away from it a little bit um, because I don't want to blow everything off. And I do a low setting. If I cranked it up to high, it would blow most of it off. Um, you know, but I mean, that's a good idea as well if you want it, just kind of a fragment of it 
you know, just crank it on high and let most of it blow away. Um, but I wanted to keep most of the image intact so that way, you know, when you're kind of flipping down the card or flipping up the corner of the page, you'll see it. So when I first made these rub-on transfers, I printed it the wrong way. I forgot to flip my image because <laughs> you're supposed to print it backwards so that when you put on the sticky paper, um, you know, and then turn it over, you're doing it the right way. Well, I did mine backwards. So I'm actually just using the one that I made, which was backwards. It still, you know, serves its purpose. <laughs> I just can't use a lot of the words because they will be backwards. So, but I'm able to use the flowers, this cute little bicycle, and some of the other things. So, all in all, it still works for me. So I had picked up this blending brush at Five Below. I don't know if you have one of those stores where you're at. Um, we have a couple of them. They're few and far between. But I thought I would practice with the blending, just kind of try it out. Um, and I like how it's how it's blending and it blends it very well, which, you know, you can't really mess up this chalk ink. I just, I love the feel of it. It just, it's a very velvety texture. So it's very easy to blend. Not all paints are easy or inks are easy to blend. Um, you know, I find the chalk ink works best for me. Um, also the Distress Oxide inks that Tim Holtz has, those work excellent. Um, you know, so it, it just kind of depends. If you get one that, you know, has that chalky texture, velvety texture, those work best. So now I'm just applying some more rub-on transfers. I love these things. Y'all know I love rub-on transfers. And, um, and then, you know, just adding a few more embellishments here and there. Just, just really want to just, you know, just cover these pages with beautiful embellishments. I just absolutely love it. So I'm going to add this last rub on transfer. And I think that will just about finish this tutorial. Um, I think we will go ahead and just wrap up the tutorials for uh, the March-April Mixed Media Junk Journal since this product is going to be discontinued. We are merging it with the Junk Journal box. Um, if you received the newsletter, I had the updates in that. But if you do have questions and need me to demonstrate something, reach out to me and I'll pop on here and do a tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.